in the past few years, we've been thinking about what kind of value QCT can deliver to the customer. I mean, besides making the best-in-class server hardware, what other values we can bring to the customer and the customer will appreciate? Since we have the solution team and later the AI software team working on the infrastructure software and the workload and the applications, I started to learn that what might be the best value we can bring to the customer, and that is workload optimization. When I de decided to make the workload optimization as the topic for my presentation today, I tried to you know, look for some picture which can best describe what workload, it, what workload is. And I searched from the web. And this picture popped up on my screen. <laughs> Apparently, this workload is not something I want to <laughs> talk later. Yeah. But anyway, I think such search result is quite natural and not a surprise. Because you know, the people are concerned more about the human workload, not the machine workload, right? <laughs> OK, but anyway, as you know, in the cloud infrastructure, there are many workloads running here and there, from the data center, or in the uh, backbone network, or even on the edge. Some workloads are key workloads that deliver you know, the services to the end, end, end customers, the end users. And some workloads are a little bit minor, but they also bring the operational value to the data center. They help to improve the efficiency of the data center hardware. OK, just like some example, the virtualization technology and the software-defined infrastructure, for example. Yeah. So those are the workloads I'm talking about. And now I'm, uh, you might want to know our methodology, how we optimize the workload for the customers. First, uh, you have to identify which workload to be optimized. And second, we need to define the workload matrix. The workload matrix means you need some method to evaluate how good the performance is to the specific workload. And then do the optimization work. Of course, it's a you know, uh, huge try and error, you know, back and forth tuning, those kind of things. We optimize the hardware, you know, the configuration of the hardware components. We might fine tune the settings of the infrastructure software and operating system. Or even we need to fine tune the settings of the firmware like the BIOS or BNC. And the end result is the best fit configuration we can provide to the customers. I don't want to go through all the you know, technology detail regarding how we optimize the workload for the customer. But I want to highlight one thing. The business goal, the customer's business goal, is always need to be considered at the same time. For example, some customers care about, uh, you know, they demand for the extreme high performance at any cost. But some customers, they like the best price performance ratio product, right? And some customers, they're concerned about the total cost of ownership. So maybe they need some energy efficient hardware, for example. Yeah. And we need to consider this at the very beginning when you start to do the workload optimization. Right now, you, uh, some of you might think, hey, it's exactly what we are doing every day right now. OK, so what other additional value QCT can bring to us? I want to give you some example to tell you how we work with the customer to do the workload optimization. Please look at the trucks in this picture. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why the modern trucks with the tilted roof instead of the flat roof on the traditional trucks? Do you know why? I'm a little bit interested in this question, okay, so I made some study. And the conclusion is the tilt roof or we call it the deflector, can help to improve the aerodynamics performance for the tracked trailer. Okay, and based on some study, you know, such deflector can help to save, uh, can reduce up to 20% of the total 
uh, fuel consumption for the truck. So it's quite a lot, 20%. Yeah. But if the customer think, okay, uh, the deflector is very valuable, but my truck does not come with the <laughs> deflector. What should I do? Do I need to buy a new truck? No, okay, you can find a, you know, you can find some vendor to make a customized deflector for your truck. Is that need a good thing, right? Another example. <coughs> I don't know if you ever noticed some trucks with the lift wheels, okay, showing here, yeah, and don't know what's the purpose of this, this wheel, okay. Actually, this wheel is called a drop axle. When the truck is fully loaded, okay, you can lower the drop axle to make it, you know, touch the ground, okay, so it's to distribute the weight of the cargo across more wheels, and hence to reduce the weight on every single wheel. So the pressure to the ground won't be, you know, uh, big enough to damage the road or damage the bridge when the truck crosses it. But when the truck is not loaded or is lightly loaded, you can lift the wheels, the drop axle, okay, so as to reduce the friction you know, between the tires and the ground, okay, so as to save the energy. And also, it can make the truck make turn more easily. So that's the function of the drop axle. Why I give you th these two examples? I don't know if you noticed, okay, in these two examples, in these two cases, we did not change any bit of the hardware. The hardware means the engine, the chassis, the wheels, we did not change anything. We just reconfigure the highway, reconfigure our truck to add a deflector. Or we just, you know, uh, fine tune the settings, <laughs> okay, to lift or lower the drop axle on the same hardware. So, uh, right now maybe you think the deflector, the drop axle are just kind of common sense, but please imagine 40 years or 50 years ago when nobody knows about this and you are the first, you know, truck fleet company to know this, it can help you to get some advantage over your competition. So I think to manage your data center is just like manage a truck fleet company. You know, we hope the customer can focus on the operational value to increase the efficiency, increase the productivity of your trucks, but just leave the deflector, you know, the drop axle things to the truck vendor, the highway vendor, just like QCT. And QCT is willing you know, to help you to be the first one, adopt the deflector, adopt the drop axle, so you got some advantage over your competition. So that's the meaning of the workload optimization. And that's something QCT can help you, but as a you know, cloud company, software company, actually you don't have this kind of capability to fine tune up, you know, to know this kind of knowledge, to fine tune the hardware, fine tune the firmware, for example. Actually, right now we already have two workload optimization POC. The first is uh, Gromax, the other one is KMIS. As you know, the Gromax is a molecular dynamics simulation software, which can simulate the interaction. Uh, among maybe millions of particles. So it's very useful for the biochemical industry, in the bio uh, biochemical industry. And we want to run as many simulation as possible per day, okay? So our performance metrics is the simulation per day, number of simulation per day. The K-means is a clustering <coughs> software. When you have millions of user data and you don't know how to cat categorize them into different groups, you can use K-means. The chemist is running on the Spark, so it's um, in-memory computing. The Gromax, if you want to run it, actually there are several steps. Some, all of those steps could be run on the C CPU solely, but if your system comes with the GPU, you can put some steps you know, to the GPU, some on the CPU, okay? Depends on, uh, your, <laughs> depends on your settings, okay? So we do some, you know, uh, test on different configurations. First, if we run 
the Grow Max only on the CPU without GPU. Okay, it's performance, you know, at the right hand, uh, left hand side. Okay, and we add two GPU, we can see about 190 percent performance gain on the GPU. Okay, and the other, even on the two GPU system, you can see. Uh, actually, we are using a 24-core CPU, you not know, dual CPU system. We can assign the number of cores to the Grow Max. As you can imagine, when we assign more CPU cores, like the 4, 6, uh, 8, 12 core to the Grow Max, we can see the performance gain. But you cannot, not, we don't suggest you to assign all of your CPU core to Grow Max because you cannot see the performance you know, increase. Uh, on the uh, uh, adversity, okay, you can see the performance drop a little bit. Why? Because you need to reserve some CPU cores for the operating system. If you don't do it, okay, you won't see the performance increase. And if you are using the Intel MPI, you can see another 30% performance gain. Besides those things, uh, low settings I just mentioned, actually you can do some fine tuning from the BIOS. Like uh, choose the high, per high performance mode from the QCT BIOS menu, and remember to disable the CPU turbo boost or CPU hyper thread. And we recommend you to use the Intel C, C++ compiler, Intel MPI, and the in Intel NKR library. Then you can get the best performance from it. On our second case, the K means again, we run in the test on, uh, based on the default settings, and we change, uh, like the, uh, uh, enable the turbo boost, enable the hyper threading, disable the C stat, and add some NUMA software. And you can see another 33, uh, sorry, 30% 30 performance gain from these tunings. And we also do another testing on two different systems. The first system is equipped with 1.5 tera uh, terabyte DRAM, and the other system are equipped with three terabyte Intel DCP NN, the data center persistent memory module. And we do the uh, performance testing. Here we uh, calculate the execution time. So that means uh, the lower number means better performance, okay? When the data set is below two terabyte, you can see the pure DRAM system has better performance. But when the size of the data set exceeds three terabyte, you can see the DCPNN system outperform the pure, uh, purely DRAM system. Because you cannot put all the data set you know, into the memory, it's a in-memory computing. So you have to use the NVMe SSD as the swapped space. So it decreased you know, the overall performance. If I use in the SAS hard drive, the situation will become even worse. So you can see the Intel DCPNN has much better performance compared to the uh, DRAM, DRAM system. As you know, uh, in August, AMD launched their ROM CPU, and we have new product line to support it from the Tusaki 1U2U server, and also uh, the single Saki 1U server. All of them support the NVIDIA. V100 and the T4 GPU for, to do the training or inference, or inference for the AI or deep learning applications. And we also have the high density 2U4 node server and OMVNE storage server to support it. And as you know, the OCP3 that our messaging card spec is just uh, finalized and our, we start to support the OCP 3.0 from our uh, new product uh, offerings. And as you know, the hot swap is one of the major features of OCP 3.0. And OCP 3.0 has three kinds of lock mechanism, port tab, latch, and internal lock. And based on a unique design from QCT, our chassis can support all three different kinds of lock mechanisms. So the customer has better flexibility to choose the OCP medicine card they like. And QCT is the first to showcase Intel OCP 3.0 medicine car at OCP Summit this year uh, in March. And also uh, our 
strategic partner Broadcom has an OCP3 uh, amazing car also with a very complete uh, product portfolio with the speed range from 1 gig to 200 gig. And I think PCIe, uh, uh, PCIe 4.0 is also one major feature of the uh, AMD ROM CPU. And uh, you might want to know uh, if the ecosystem is ready for PCIe 4.0. Uh, based on our understanding, okay, many uh, vendors are already developing the PCIe uh, 4.0 compatible uh, product. Okay, just like the uh, red car, HBA car from Broadcom, and also all the major uh, SSD vendors, they are developing their PCIe uh, 4.0 compatible product right now. And the uh, uh, fiber channel car is another example to support the PCIe 4.0. We make, as you know, the AMD CPU has a uh, higher core count and with mo uh, more PCIe lens. So make the single socket AMD platform more attractive to the customer. And we do the comparison, uh, the one socket AMD CPU with 64 core compared to the dual Saki uh, 56 core uh, system. And we attach the MESD to these two systems. When we increase the number of the drive, okay, we'll check if uh, there's any bottleneck on the CPU side. And we check the throughput, we increase the number of drive from one to 12. Okay, we did not see any you know, performance drop. Okay, it's just scale up linearly. Even we increase the number of drive to 24 on the single socket system, the throughput still scale up linearly or without any CPU bottleneck. We do the 4K IAPS to see if there's any uh, performance drop when we increase the number of drive. Yeah, uh, actually we see the same similar result, okay. The performance can scale up linearly without any problem even on the single socket system. As you know, the, only the PCI Gen 4 can support the 200 gigabit uh, per second high, high bandwidth. And we tested both the Merlinux uh, 200 gig NICA and Broadcom NICA. Both of them can reach up to 190 something gigabit per second throughput, which is almost 100% of the theoretical value of the PCI Gen 4 uh, bandwidth. Okay, I think uh, that's my presentation today. Yeah. If you, you are interested in the performance optimization or you're interested uh, in the new product offerings from uh, QCT, please contact our sales representative here. Okay, thank you.